Hi, welcome to my uh, guitar tutorial here. I'm going to be talking about Black Orpheus uh, chord melody arrangement. So uh, just very briefly, I'll just give you a, a summary of what I'm uh, planning to do here. So uh, I'm going to start off with uh, playing through the, the chord melody arrangement as written, and then I'll you know, play through it again um, and maybe just you know, show you how you can, you know, kind of change things a little bit from the written arrangement. I am, I'm doing something a little bit different with this video that I normally don't do. I'm going to include the note for note tab. Uh, there'll be a link below for that. I'll also be talking about the, the lead sheet that you might see in, in a fake book of Black Orpheus, because that was kind of how I first learned how to play this song. And I'll, I'll be relating some stories uh, about you know, how I learned jazz and, and things like that to kind of make it interesting and, and, and personal. Uh, and uh, let's see what else. Yeah, and so that lead sheet will also be available a as a link. And I also like to use the, the concept of, you know, no holes barred. So what I mean by that is is I'm, I'm here to really share, you know, my years and decades of, of playing, teaching, um, you know, teaching guitar, you know, private guitar lessons and being on YouTube. And um, so hopefully uh, you'll get some value out of this as a beginner guitar player or somebody who maybe is good at, say, rock or, or metal or, or classical. And maybe you haven't sit, sat down and learned some of these things. So I'll throw in some music theory and uh, maybe make some reference to some books that I used over the years um, to, to, to do this. Uh, and I'll also uh, be changing picks also just to, to change up the sound. So right now I'm going to start off with a, a Herco uh, the Flex 50. Okay, so for, for right now I'm just going to play through the arrangement as written. This will be Black Orpheus chord melody uh, basic arrangement. Okay, so that's pretty typical of how I do most of these chord melody ar arrangement videos. I just play through as written, you know, very slowly, carefully, um, you know, just to make sure that, you, you know, if, if you had this, if you ever had this uh, arrangement that you could, uh, you know, see where I'm coming from. So now what I'm going to do, before I, I try to embellish too much, I'm just going to talk a little bit about, you know, what how I've written this one. So this is a, 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 a song that I played when I first, uh, let's see, that would have been like maybe late 20s, early 30s, when I was first getting into jazz, I met some older jazz musicians, uh, uh, husband, wife, uh, drummer, bass, bass player, upright bass, and then a, a guy, Jack uh, Edgar, from the music store. He was the, he was the leader of the group, and then that, that's where I met Steve Bowman. 
and I was a guitar player. I was just a young guy, you know, and just they said, hey, Mick, do you want to join this group? And they, they, they were all much more experienced with jazz. <laughs> I sometimes joke uh, with, with my students. I used to joke how I would often get lost <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the tune because I didn't know any of this stuff. And these guys were jamming on, you know, Foggy Day and all the things you are. And I would get lost in it. So, so every so often Jack would go like this. He'd point to his head and that meant, OK, we're back at the, up at the top of the, you know, the, the top of the tune. So he was he was a very good, very good leader, um, and I and I had to learn to play these tunes. So Black Orpheus would have been one of the first ones that I learned. So um, yeah, so that's just a little little side note story. So, uh, so so this particular arrangement, Black Orpheus, is one of my older ones. So there's a lot of things in there when you look at it that are going to be a little different than I. Uh, that I was able to, as I got better with the with the software I was using, I was using uh, uh, what do you call it? Progression uh, for iPad. R really, an excellent uh, app. I think it was called something else before that. I can't think of what it was called. But anyhow, if you look at the um, if you look at the second measure, for example, I have that I have that little grace note there. That's something I do a lot. And then, in, in technically speaking, E7 flat nine should be E G sharp B. E G sharp B D F, and all those I wrote as A flat, and that was just because of what the software did. Because I, I call this key of C or key of A minor, it automatically made that an A flat, and I didn't figure out how to change that. So so you'll notice you'll notice that. Um, let's see if there's anything else that kind of stands out to me, and and just obviously just the, the whole way it's written, it's very straight. You know, I, I just uh, I'm just basically following the lead sheet one two three four and one two three four and so that so everything and then a whole note b half diminished e7 you're just following you're following the lead sheet and not really doing doing very very much um so I guess that's all I'll say about about that so so maybe what I'll do is I'll just go kind of line by line and just embellish a little bit and maybe talk about what I'm doing. Um, so we got A minor, A minor 7. Now I'm doing this grace note, a very common device. Okay, so right there, I don't have that written in there, so I'm just doing a slide. And then here, since it's, since it's 4, yeah, you know, I just do like a simple arpeggio thing. Arpeggio. Just kind of do something uh, rhythmically with the melody. Okay, now right there. So I so, so the way I orig originally wrote the arrangement, I'm using bar chords. So I could have done any number of things there. I could have done something like that: discrete fingering, D A uh, D C F A. Now that's something you'll see a lot in kind of like uh, like bossa nova music. What they'll do is is because they're playing finger style for a G seventh chord, they might do something like that, or for or for like a like an A minor seventh chord, they just might bar right across and not bother to put that third finger down. Yeah, so so that's just something that I learned learned from those guys. So. Now see see by doing by doing the fingering like that right and that's also not written in so 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 I'm going to that uh, that high B note I'm just sliding because it's it's convenient it's closer and it sounds good so okay and now then here's a device that I I use probably a little bit too much so. I'm always thinking guitar. I'm always thinking E A D G B E. So I'm always looking for opportunities to throw in open strings or harmonics. So here's a here's a device I use in a lot of my arrangements. Natural harmonics, right? And really, they all work. You know, third, uh, major seven, five, nine, six, and then the third again. Okay, so now on that A seventh chord, so in the in the in the lead sheet they call that um, it's called C sharp um, uh, diminished seventh 
or A7 flat 9. So it's essentially this, they're essentially the same thing. So when, when you think C sharp diminished 7, it's leading up to that next D minor chord. A7, it's going up by a fifth. If you take A7 flat 9, A, C sharp, E, G, B flat, the top part of an A7 flat 9 chord is the C sharp uh, diminished 7. So there's a lot, you can do a whole you know, series on, on diminished, uh, all the different things that you can do with it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of share a lick that I do, um, uh, and maybe I'll put a link in, in the description below. Uh, there's a performance that I did with my son um, at the Greer School when I was uh, teaching private guitar lessons there. We did a faculty recital, and we did this. Uh, we did Black Orpheus. So uh, I, I did a, a particular lick that I, I invented, maybe pretty pretty close to that concert. Uh, so I'm, I'm on my... Uh, so... And actually, I was watching... Uh, uh, I, 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 the Japanese uh, guitar teacher Tomo Fujita, I think that's his name, and yeah, he he has a very similar. He goes, he calls that his lick. Yeah, so so this lick that I'm doing here, I didn't steal from Tomo. I I came up with this. I, I have the, the the video to prove it. Uh, I'm just adding one more note to that. So that's E, G, B flat, C sharp, E. So I'll sometimes refer to these as X patterns. And what I'm going to do at this point, I'm just going to switch picks. Uh, so that's the Herco uh, Flex 50. I'm going to switch to um, the Herco Flex 75, sometimes called the Holy Grail pick. See, it's a, it's, it's a little stiffer, but but it's because it's nylon, it still is going to give me a nice soft sound. So, so I'm going to take this shape and I'm just going to move it up three frets at a time. Okay, three frets. Three frets. All right, so this is, this is, that's the first part of the lick that I do uh, on the Black Orpheus Live, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that here also. So, da, da, de, da. so I'm going to go at a time, out of the arrangement. Okay, so the picking. So up down up so that, that's like a sort of a, t a typical thing that a sweep you know a sweep pick w would do they would so if you're, if, if you're gonna go down and with up and then if you're if you're starting if you're gonna go down you start with up up down up up okay now on the way down I'm gonna do a different shape uh, so G B flat C sharp E G Okay, so that's another what I would call an X shape pattern. Down three frets from starting from the E, starting from the C sharp, and then starting from the B flat. And then I would get back into the song. Ba ba da di da da. So that's what I what I would do. So uh, I'll play the whole lick kind of slow, um, going up and then going down, and then you can also watch me play it live uh, with with my son Zach, uh, aka Jazz. So So now I'll do it. I won't do it like super fast, but I'll do it kind of more like a like a like a performance. Okay. So here here here's the lick. Uh, so. So on. And then obviously you can, there's different things you can do with articulations, uh, but that that strategy of up, down, up, I think is is, is fairly fairly common. Okay, so now in this passage here, so there's a lot of different ways you can voice these chords and get from one chord to the other. So whenever I did this particular arrangement, which was you know many many years ago, I should I should have looked up when I when I did this. This is this is probably at least ten years old. I thought it was a better idea to go to get that melody note within that chord. So I went da da da, and then the same thing here on the C chord. C C 
you know, getting it out of that, that same shape. Now here, this, this is something that I just kind of picked up from years and years of playing these chord melody arrangements at like, you know, cocktail parties, you know, country clubs, this, you know, weddings. See, I, I try to hold down as many fingers as I can. Okay, to kind of simulate the bass. Da, 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 da. But as after I've played this for years and years, I thought, well, why not get to the next melody note in, in, and lead into the next chord? So, for example, here. Ba, ba, da. So there's my D minor 7. Now I want to get to that G7 chord. Da, da. Okay. Now look what just happened there. So I use my second finger. So I... I, I I'm kind of in a, in a little bit of a pickle there. And I can just sneak in my, you know, sneak in the G bass. So that's that's just something uh, I think I picked that. Well, obviously Hendrix does that, but I remember uh, years and years ago going to a concert, uh, Cal Collins, old time jazz player, and he was accompanying a singer. And he, I mean, that dude, he used his thumb on practically every single chord, you know. And I, I think I remember hearing something about him reading an article where he talks about his style, how unconventional his style is, because I think he was self-taught. Okay, so I'll continue on this p p passage. D minor seventh. So I'm going to the D. So I'm playing uh, F, B, D, uh, diminish, sneaking in my G. Okay, next part. There's my C major seventh chord. Now I want to go into that F chord. So no, notice what I did there. I used my second finger again embellish the melody and that leads very nicely into that F major 7 chord and then what I might do here because I'm on open string it's just kind of just some kind of embellishment around that melody okay so what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and play those those kind of like those eight bars uh, with the uh, using that little different fingering strategy so Okay, so then what I might do there after I've kind of stayed at the melody or maybe even afterwards, here's a device that I, I, I just kind of stumbled upon and I also kind of figured it out. Uh, uh, there's a book, um, I think it's called The Jazz Theory Book by Mark Levine. And he talked, and it's, it's an excellent book. It's yay thick. And I haven't studied through every single little thing, but he, he has a device where he plays uh, minor seven flat five. <laughs> And then moves it up three frets, and he—that's he, essentially a two-five in minor. I've talked about—I think I've talked about this in other videos. Yeah, so that's kind of another good thing if you're just getting into jazz. Um, you know, and I—I I, I discovered this many years ago because I was playing a lot of chords because I because I had a you know in in the group with 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 Jack and then with Steve. So Jack was playing alto, Steve was playing tenor, and those dudes were playing solos and i wasn't really really very good at solos so i found out that i was playing a lot a lot of chords so i, I thought well i have all these two fives the two five this i better learn as many different ways to play two fives so that was kind of part of my my jazz education so if i'm here so second page <laughs> Okay, so how about it would be like so here I'm gonna kind of change the melody okay, say so listen to Ed Bickert for example I mean you know Ed would do stuff like that you know just those little chords and and adding different melodies and of course he I think he played more finger style or hybrid picking so, so a minor seventh okay so, so notice there a minor uh, let that A ring. So now I'm going to go to a B minor, because that's the, the chord that's called for B minor 7 flat 5. B, F, A, D, uh, D. And 
then you can always add that sus for them. That's still in the scale. And then the device that I got from Mark Levine, I'm not going to get into a lot of the theory of it, but it's, it has to do with the melodic minor. You know, this is melodic minor from the, the from one key, and this would be melodic minor from from the key that's going to give you the altered dominant. So, for example, like if I'm on an E seventh chord, this is altered dominant from F F F, F a melodic minor. So I'll just look. I'll just kind of uh, look at this piece right here. Okay. So that's your two chord. Move the minor seventh up three frets, and that ends up being your five chord. And it ends up being an ultra dominant. Uh, so you got. So if you have E, you would have um, flat seven third, and then you would have sharp five, flat nine, sharp nine. And it's helpful to show the low, the E E bass also. And there's any any number of voicings I could have done there. I could have done something like um, yeah, something like that. I just get kind of because because of the, the low E and low A. Um, okay, so let's say I'm I'm on the second page and I'm I'm just kind of messing with the melody here. Um, Okay, now there I did a little bit different, a little bit different voicing there. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I want to talk about there. Oh yeah, there's one little kind of little subtle thing that I do a lot in, in my arrangements, and this was you know, just based on doing a lot of solo guitar, trying to make it as full as possible. So if I'm coming from this A minor. Now I'm on that B minor seven chord. So so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that A ring because the A is part of the of this B minor seven flat five chord. All right, hear that? It, it doesn't sound bad, and it just fills it a little bit. Now there it sounds a little bit weird. So then what I might do is just very quickly mute that A, and then and then and then drop in my E bass note. I did. I, I muted the A, and then I and I dropped in the, the, the E. Okay, so let's see where I'm at. Okay, so the E minor seven flat five. Okay, now now there's the concept of flat five substitution. So so an easy way to think of that, if you just take this shape, A E flat. A E flat A E flat you know, G D flat G that'll give you your flat five substitution. So if I have an A seventh chord, my flat five substitution is E flat. If I have a G seventh chord, my flat flat five substitution is D flat, and vice versa. They they work in both directions. Um, the thing I read a long time ago about these is make a flat five su substitution either to make the bass line smoother. Or because you want the melody to be a little bit more interesting uh, based on, you know, so here, if I have a G melody, that's this flat at seventh. If I have a, if I make that E flat, that's actually kind of interesting too. It's just, it's just a third. And then leading into your D. So you have E, E flat, D, E minor seven flat five, uh, E, E flat seven, flat five and then leading into your D minor or D minor seven okay so let me let me do a little different treatment there so I have my E my, uh, so this is the second line of the second page okay, I, okay so I did it as written I just dropped in that E flat the uh, flat five Okay, now, now I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. So, so, so this is another thing cliche. Just like I talked about the two five. Um, just like if you learn to play blues or rock, there's certain cliches, certain things you want to know. This, this, uh, I think they sometimes call this a line cliche. D minor, D minor major seven, D minor seven, D minor six. So that's another thing that if you're gonna get into jazz, try to figure out as many different ways of playing that. So here's another way of playing that. So I just went. Uh, doo -doo, 
I'm on my D, I'm just on a standard D minor chord. So what I'm then, I, then I'm just gonna kind of get, get get out of the melody, and I'm gonna do voicings on the inner four strings. Okay, so what's gonna happen? D, C sharp, C, B. So everything else is staying the same. The D, A, F is staying the same if you visualize that. And then I'm just going to have to refinger D and then C sharp. Now there I did discrete fingering. Now th there was a reason why I did that. So that's a little harder to grab, but then it's a little easier to get there. So I could have gone here, then C sharp, I could have done a bar here, but then getting to this chord, a little bit harder to do. So so that's the other thing about fingerings. It's it's almost always a good idea to know various ways of, 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 of playing a chord uh, to play. Um, you know, so the bar chord, D minor seven, discrete fingering. Yeah, because here, like if I did my D minor seven like this, then I can do that move. Which is, which is basically another way of playing a 2-5. D minor 7. So that's a, a D minor, you know, D, D minor 6 or D minor, uh, or, or, or you can think of it as a G7 chord, a G9 chord. Let's see that, so D minor 7. With a G, okay. All right, so uh, uh, I think what I'll do next is I'll, I'll just kind of take that second line there. So I'll add all these different, I'll add the flat five, and then I'll add these inner voicings here to that uh, line cliche. Okay, here goes three. And, um. Okay, so then this is sort of the same. Now then, what I might do here, do that. Right, that's a device I use a lot. Yeah, you know, just any kind of, and, and that was something that I learned from my mentor Dave. He talked a lot about uh, sliding into and out of chords from a half step. He says you can do that all day long. That works. That works in a lot, a lot of different styles. So just go in from a half step. So I just went into that. Just, so it, it takes a little bit of, of practice to get that. Um, you know, what I used to tell my private students is, you don't want to be gripping your neck too hard, but you're actually kind of, kind of pulling down, kind of pulling with your arm. See what I'm doing? So I'm, 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 I'm touching, not touching the, the, the back. And I'm kind of pulling, pulling with with my arm. Okay, then this. Da -da -da -da. I like just like because it just kind of sounds kind of Spanish in me, Spanish. -y. That's just like a feel thing. last uh, measure there uh, so B minor 7 so B, B half diminished so uh, that's a it's actually a B half diminished sus because my uh, minor 7 flat 5 half diminished would be the F but I, I kind of like that having that E ringing there and then here's another flat 5 substitution so in the in the uh, chord guitar chord, I'm, I'm calling it an E7 flat 5. So this is one of these things of music theory. I'll, I'll try to explain this as, as succinctly as possible. So this chord right here is very interesting. You'll, you'll hear this like if you look at my um, uh, Goodbye Pork Pie hat. This chord is actually two different chords. Okay, so if, if, we're, say, if we're calling it E7 flat 5, it's E G sharp B flat, the flat 5, and then D is the flat seven. So look at that shape. Okay, now if we're calling it B flat seven flat five, which is the, that's your chord substitution, E, B flat, okay? Same shape. So you have B flat, D, F flat, or that's your flat five, and then A flat. So it's kind of an interesting. So so, so this chord literally is two different chords. It, you know, it just depends on, on, on the context and what you're calling the root. It's an E7, E7 flat five. So I could have very easily called that a B flat seven flat five. I don't know why I, I did that because I, I guess I did this, I did this uh, chart 
you know, many, many, uh, many years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I think what I'll do next, uh, like I, said, I like to keep these pretty loose. I like to have some, you know, some basic ideas, but then I like to just kind of let things happen as, as they will. I think I'll, I'll stick with the Herco pick. I'm just going to play through the basic arrangement and just kind of add, add my own embellishments, kind of do it as if maybe I was doing a performance and kind, kind of see what happens. Uh, I'll play it at least once through. I might play it a, a second time also. And, and then if I, if I come across anything that I haven't talked about at this point, I'll, I'll go back and, and uh, talk about it. I'm moving the mic out of the way here. I just kind of spontaneously decided to go into finger style. Uh, quite frankly, I, I really prefer to play finger style on a nylon guitar. I, I just feel like I can get the correct percussiveness and the correct kind of uh, sustain and everything. I think on, on an electric guitar, playing that style, I think it's a little bit harder to kind of get it percussive and to kind of get the notes to not uh, sustain very much. All right, so... Uh, I think I think I've said a lot of things I wanted to say. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how, how I might uh, end this. Okay, so if you go you know, refer to that uh, the live performance with my son. So one of the things I like to do is um, is kind of play around with that two five. Um, actually, you'll notice in that in that. Pre previous example I just did notice how instead of going all the time I kind of went uh, I, I did yeah so that's kind of a thing that you really want to study is uh, how many different ways you can play the two five so let me see uh, so you have a minor seven that's just kind of a standard voicing okay all right B minor seven sus and then to that B flat seven flat five Okay, then uh, depending on what you're doing, you can also throw in the low E bass as an alternate. Right, 
and I don't want to get into a big discussion about you know Brazilian musicians versus uh, jazz musicians. I, I know there's a whole thing with the clave and everything. Uh, uh, and because of how I grew up, I, I'm, I don't have that in my in my DNA, the, that clave. But you know, the, the, they'll be very, very strict on See, I can't really, I can't really play that way. I have to really think about it. Um, I took a went to a Duquesne uh, guitar workshop many years ago, and there was this guy. He had just gotten back from like Rio de Janeiro, and this guy was like, boom, duh, duh. he said he was talking about the big drums and and the clave, and he says you, you just get that in your in your blood, you know, just from you know being <laughs> being around uh, the people, uh, you know, c celebrating that. Okay, so I'm just, I'm think I'm mostly presenting harmonic ideas. Okay, so then uh, then. Uh, then instead of playing uh, regular E7, play like the Jimi Hendrix chord sharp, E7 sharp 9. All right. So to do that chord effectively, you have to kind of have what's called a hinge bar. So I have to already have that F note down. I have to make sure I'm not blocking that out. So. So then as I'm editing the tune, I might kind of go back and forth between those two. So let's say I'm going like. So that is again. All right, so that's just that's just a couple couple examples of what you can do. And then uh, when when Zach and I when we finished Black Orpheus, this is just something I came up with uh, many years ago. So it's almost like a chord substitution. Ba -da -ba -ba. All right, so that's a, it's an A minor seventh. So the basic the progression is A minor seventh, B minor seventh flat five to E seven. So that's your, kind of your basic vamp. So I'm doing A minor seven, and then I'm doing. That chord, C6, C A E G, and that's another chord that's both C6 and it's also A minor seven, A minor seven, A C E G. So, and then I'm not sure how I came up with this. This is probably just, I think I, I heard somebody talking about adding. So you have minor seven flat five, minor seven sharp five. I think I maybe heard somebody talk about that, and that didn't really sound correct in this constant. Context. Actually, that's not that's bad. That, that, that almost sounds like a Steely Dan chord there. So, you know, learn the rules and then break the rules. So, I think what I decided sounded better was to go uh, sharp. Uh, so, still the B, but I'm changing the quality of the chord. That's very, very common in jazz. Uh, you know. Okay, and now here, this is an interesting, this is a chord substitution. So this is that same concept I was talking about earlier. So Jimi Hendrix chord, E7, E, G sharp, D, G, E7, substitute, flat five substitution is B flat seven. So once again, you, you would just have to decide when to use one or the, the other, depending on how, what kind of melody you had. It's just a, a, um, up to you. So. All right, so that's that's the the in, the uh, outro that we do. Uh, so I'll play that for you. Two, three, four. minor tune sometimes I like landing on just like the just like, like on the pure minor sometimes that sounds right to me sometimes I like kind of minor sixth uh, that's kind of nice you know or you know minor uh, major seven but here it doesn't really to my mind it doesn't really work I think earlier when I was getting ready for this video I thought it, it would sound cool to go um Yeah, 
so I don't know if I would go so and then maybe as an afterthought so it's just regular, regular minor seven so 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 the beauty of this open bass let it ring and then it kind of rings a little bit as I'm going to this chord here so this is just a um, it's kind of like a you can think of it as kind of C major seven um, a flat five or you can just kind of think of it as a, a minor like a minor nine, nine, there's your third, and then there's your six, like a like an A minor six, nine. Kind of a nice sound. Um. When I was uh, uh, hanging out with Jack, uh, the, the the jazz uh, sax player, he, he he used to have a joke. He says, yeah, in jazz, like, have a good intro, and have a good outro. So begin well and end well, and in the middle, um, play whatever you want because nobody's paying attention anyhow. So especially, especially like if you're in a restaurant or a bar, no one's really <laughs> listening. So, you know, um, so anyway, that was a, that was kind of a funny, kind of a funny uh, joke. Okay, I'm getting kind of a little, little long-winded here. Uh, I'm just going to talk about really quickly this coda. I've hardly, I just don't really care for the coda. I'm, it's just not something I play. I think my sax player Steve, I think he likes to play the coda. Um, I just, it just, I just don't like to play. I just, I just, I, I like to do my own. Do, do, do. I like to do that ending. So I'll just look at this coda here. Um, uh, do, do, da, da, this is the the coda on the lead sheet. I think, I think, and then a lot of times you'll you'll tag it. You'll do like a three time tag. I'll do it again. Kind of sounds a little bit like a pop song there. Notice what I did there for that for that that B melody. So. I can use this voicing G C E B, okay, which is essentially a, a C major seven chord, or I could use this voicing. I'll play that one more time. Actually, it's kind of growing on me. Maybe I'll have to start uh, throwing it in. I covered mostly everything I wanted to, to talk about in, in this tutorial. So hopefully you've heard some things and uh, hopefully maybe I've pointed out a couple of things that maybe you either forgot about or like, oh, that's kind of a cool way of, of looking at that. So that's what I'm really trying to, to do here with these videos. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to say that I have all the answers. Uh, I'm just trying to point you in, in some direction and then you can take what I have and then you know, jump off and, and do your own thing and make it way better. Uh, so, okay. Thanks for watching. <laughs>